Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. So uh, I am Edith, and I am uh, developing a messaging services in the Development Center One. So this is the title of our presentation. And we are going to introduce what is our initiatives, initiatives to the microservices and also the microservice architectures. So the among the, you, uh, among you, the some of you already knows that uh, the architecture of the microservices and the concept of the microservices. Just uh, to, uh, I'd like to ask you a question: that How many of you have uh, made microservices? Uh, please raise your hand if you have developed any microservices. Thank you very much. So you may have your idea of how you're going to build the microservices, and uh, but you may be interested in how Line has developed the microservices. So this is a today's agenda. So we're going to talk about it, how we apply the microservices to our system. And then also uh, I'd like to talk about how the messaging platform has evolved. And then after that, how we going to apply them the concept of the uh, how we have applied the concept of the microservices to a message platform and what we had to do and what kind of tools that we have developed and used. And then at the, what we are going to uh, apply, how we're going to apply the microservice architecture going forward. So that's what we're going to talk about. We haven't, we didn't use the microservices architecture in the very beginning. Bef in the past, the, we developed this service as a monolithic service. And back in 2011, there was a one application server called the talk server here. And then there are some storage uh, Ready and MySQL. And then we had uh, Leggy. Leggy as a gateway to connect the client and the server. So this was the uh, architecture that we developed to release the messaging services faster to the users. And currently, we have many features and functionalities included. It's not just a tool to send a text messages, but you can uh, send the stamp to your friends, or you can watch the news, or you can share the video with your friends, and you can talk to your friends. So we have uh, many functionalities. So you, if you try to uh, realize these functionalities with one web application, uh, it's going to be too complicated. And uh, so we had experienced some complexity. So uh, let me talk about uh, how the journey that we took. So back in 2011, we had a talk about one monolithic web application to support the message messaging functionality. So that was the server that we created. At this point, the we, our objective was to build the messaging server quickly. So one web application and one team that worked well, but we increased the members and then we wanted to do more. So then uh, we found that we needed to coordinate with the uh, members other than the development teams. So for example, if you want to discuss the functionality which is going to put into the next release, then for example, you have a leader. So uh, leader said that we're going to develop the uh, video share functionalities. So let's develop the video share functionality with all of us. So that was how we 
worked in the beginning of the development. So everybody worked for one purpose. But as the team expanded, and also the messaging service was expanding. So then uh, we had the more thing that we wanted to do or more thing that we had to do. So then, then we came to the point that, uh, look, then, uh, you said that we want to do the uh, video, but then at the stamp functionality would be more important for the better user experience. Or some other members said, oh, no, we should focus on the free of charge phone call. So therefore, that uh, we used to be a one team, and uh, we worked for uh, one direction in terms of our requirements and uh, development functionality. But now that we needed to coordinate more and more, so it was becoming difficult to align within a team. And also, it was difficult to prioritize the development. And we needed a lot of uh, coordination within the team. And so therefore, the team speed of the development was slowed down. So in order to avoid the slowing down of the development speed, so uh, we set up another team to handle the video contents. And so we handled it as a separate service. And so then uh, for the stamp functionality, we set up the team for a stamp service and authentication team. And so we split the team into a multiple teams per service, per functionality. So then each team controls its own work uh, and worked on a different speed. So that's how we evolved as a result. Currently, Stamp Shop focuses on a new stamp, and the Talk Server focuses on a new message type, like sending the video. So uh, each team develops the different services with the different speed. And this is the current messaging platform as of 2019, so Swift, REST, and uh, so each uh, service calls with each other using the REST and the Swift. So uh, this is just a rough separation of the different services, but you may think that it's not a micro service architecture at all. Uh, it's, it is true, it's not, but one functionality, one square, includes the number, of, uh, multiple number of services and the number, multiple members. So there is a one team which is responsible for only one service and also with some functionality, for example, sticker shop, there are 20 services included in a sticker shop functionality. So we have a more, uh, we, we can uh, develop a bigger services and also that in the messaging. So like uh, some messaging services is the 600,000 lines of codes monoliths. So, so each team focuses on what they want to do so that the granularity is different from team to team. And uh, as we evolve to this kind of architecture, and, uh, so um, by making it the microservices, the development of the order of the development or order of the releases are not conflicting with each other anymore. But on the other hand, it used to be a one monolith server, but we split it. So we had more components and also the failure uh, caused a domino effect so that the entire service uh, 
had an out of bus uh, outage of the services. So, so uh, such outage and uh, some pitfall of the architecture had to be considered how to solve. So. Uh, so according to the scale of the services, we split the services and uh, on the other hand, you have to run the services stably. So uh, we focus on the three concepts, connectivity, directory services and the routing. So these are the tools that we have. Uh, these are the tools uh, we have developed. So the first, uh, with regard to the connectivity, this is the one to uh, connect uh, services. So it functions as a network a library and also the directory service uh, to have a central management of the services and the routing uh, is the gateway mechanism. So uh, we developed our Maria central dogma, Legi, respectively. So I'm going to uh, explain uh, each tool uh, one by one and starting with the uh, Armeria, which offers the connectivity. So Armeria uh, is a native-based asynchronous HTTP2 client server library. And in a messaging platform, uh, so uh, this is normally used for uh, newly created services. And also, uh, with regard to uh, old services, it can uh, replace with a new one. So uh, that kind of work is done in a daily basis. So the, under the network uh, networking library, uh, this approach is uh, pretty common. So networking library through uh, HTTP2, efficient communication is carried out, and also uh, necessary functions such as logging or uh, monitoring integration, uh, uh, distributed tracing, and also the uh, failure is uh, isolated, uh, not to propagate it to uh, other system using circuit breaker. Uh, those uh, functionalities are available and they are necessary for a uh, microservice creation. And in case of Armeria, so most of the uh, functions are implemented as a decorator. And I think uh, you know about the decorator. So the users uh, can combine the provided uh, decorator and user can uh, create uh, own a uh, client according to the service uh, characteristics. For example, if you want to use the HTTP2 uh, client, uh, in case of the HTTP2, uh, once the connection is established, it has to be used. So if you want to uh, carry out the load balance, that has to be carried out at the software level. So uh, in case of Armeria, how the connection should be managed, how the load should be managed, the user don't have to uh, take care of that. So that is already implemented. And in, if you want to use Armeria as a thrift client, so client side load balancer or circuit breaker, or the distributed tracing, and also the API latency or uh, request timing, request response data size. Those information is collected by using a uh, logging and metrics. So the uh, uh, failure robust client uh, can be created. And also uh, if the failure occurs, you can understand what is happening uh, easily. Also the server side similar decorators are available rate limiting or Prometheus uh, metrics exporting uh, mechanism. So if there is a problem, uh, there is a, a mechanism that you can handle the issue easily. 
So for you to, uh, for us to create a micro service, uh, we have another tool uh, created, uh, which is the central dogma. So this one uh, tag is targeting a wider scope. So this was built to as a, a repo repository service for file. So the services increased, and if services want to share the setting, or if you don't know where the service is located, so in this case, the, through the configuration service, maintenance activity uh, can be done uh, much easily. So uh, this uh, is a high availability configuration, and also uh, it is possible to uh, track back the configuration in the past. So when the trouble happens, uh, you can easily address the trouble. And also the configuration you are interested in, if it is uh, changed, notification can be done as a, a push notification or the pull notification by using long polling. So you can easily uh, know uh, that changes are made on your interesting uh, configuration. So the information registered to a central uh, dogma is managed uh, centrally. For example, the operator related to the service uh, is available uh, from the service. And the service inform information, it doesn't matter whether it is a configuration. So that you can refer the endpoint information, uh, which host can uh, be responsible for which service. So this uh, figure shows the service combining uh, Almeria and uh, Central Dogma. So uh, Almeria client doesn't have to know where the service exists. So just including the service name into the uh, URL, and it can uh, collect the endpoint information through the Central Dogma. So on code, uh, just writing uh, down the service name and the uh, proper information exchange is uh, carried out. So the third tool we have uh, developed for microservice is a routing uh, system, routing mechanism, Legi. So the Legi was uh, announced in a previous dev day. So this is the API gateway uh, described with uh, Arlang. So, so the Arlang uh, characteristic, such as a hot swap or the parallel performance, and also the robust uh, language design uh, is utilized. So by uh, keeping the connection with many clients and to continue, yes, continuously having a high, high quality communication is uh, important. So the HTTP2 or HTTP2 uh, predecessor, uh, Speedy is the base, and uh, customized protocol is used. And to minimize the communication latency, so the uh, Legi is uh, installed, the closest data center, and the dedicated line is used, and uh, latency is minimized. So to, it is not easy to send uh, the uh, routing information to all uh, POPs without any mistake. So in case of Leggy, uh, to uh, which path to which service should be routed, uh, that is uh, described as a, a domain-specific language. So public dispatcher, the globally uh, distributed uh, Connecting to the internet description is uh, shown here. So client uh, 
in, there is a URL handler. So this is the core of the DSL. And to which URL pattern, uh, this is written as a regular expression. So to which path, uh, what kind of service should be routed? So uh, that is uh, written with the service name. So NCX uh, is uh, most NGINX setting is has the uh, similar concept. But here, uh, the detail upstream information is not written here. But anyway, the using a central dogma, the information is managed centrally. So a flexible and less mistake operation is possible. So URL handler uh, is written here, and also each client, for example, in case of the Android user, uh, this should go to uh, this talk server, and the iPhone user should use this server. So by client, how many uh, users exist and how many requests do they have? So depending on the such relationship toward the upstream uh, server, so what kind of uh, backend uh, and how much scale is uh, ready? So that is not uh, clear, these uh, some cases. So through the central dogma, you can refer the host information directly. So you can actually uh, increase and uh, decrease the number of the uh, elements easily. So uh, how are we uh, actually using this kind of uh, tool? So this is the case study. And so I would like to uh, case show the case study. The uh, sticker sending is uh, separated as a microservice. Stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp-stamp
This business logic is that it was working with in a regist and a application. So every time the user purchase and send a stamp, the workload increased. To be more specific, when a user sent a sticker or when a user purchased a sticker, the regist slow query uh, happened with the regis. And it's a single query. So this redis, the, uh, which is connected to the talk server, stopped. So because of that slow log, the talk server also stopped momentarily. And uh, it's not the end of the story. If a talk server stopped momentarily, the request which was not Requests which were not processed did not come from only the client, but it connected to the different services. For example, requests sometimes came from the sticker shop or clients or authentication requests, and there were many requests coming. So that this failure had a ripple effect to the, all the different services. And so sometimes that the message services, entire message service itself was impacted. So that was a ripple effect. And so that's the problem we had. So, and we had a very simple solution to solve this situation. Of course, if you change the data structures so that the slow query would not happen, that was ideal. But within the one big monolith of the talk server, if to separate the uh, responsibilities scope of the responsibility and to narrow the impact area. And then even if it has uh, impacted, if the failure doesn't uh, propagate to the upstream by introducing the circuit breaker pattern or automatic retry, uh, system that we try not to have the ripple effect to the entire services. So, but uh, communication would be increased by doing that. So we thought of the negative impact on the performance, however, but we've been uh, building the Ameria or Central Dogma, which was strong to the uh, failure and very flexible. So by combining that, by combining such a building blocks, and uh, we were not, we were able to separate the services without degrading the services. On the other hand, according to the scale of the service and the speed, we needed to have a system that can be more flexible. But we didn't expect that the sticker will become that big, and uh, we didn't expect the increase of a user this much. So um, going forward, uh, we may have to handle the scaling of the functionality due to the change of the situation going forward. So for future, like uh, we have separated the uh, functionality by feature, for example, like open chat and the sticker functionality. But uh, in order to uh, provide a, a pr appropriate development speed, then we had to separate the uh, messaging platform per function, like m smaller granularity. So by separating the service architecture, architecture by function, then like on top of the Armeria and the central dogma, per function or per storage, uh, we needed to introduce some uh, system which can handle the common interest. So we needed to develop the uh, system uh, development scheme that which can fast and uh, very uh, robust and uh, flexible. Although it's not a microservices, but uh, 
So we talked about how we split the services and the team for the line messaging platform. And then we talked about the system to for the development, like Armelia and the Central Dogma and Legi. So in order to build the future services, so in order to deliver the value in a very fast manner uh, with our system, we have to keep working to think about the better development methodology. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.